next, um, allow me to um, introduce uh, Teng Tong uh, from uh, Technical University of Dresden. Thank you very much, Professor Nabushan. And so, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my presentation. My name is Gong Qin from Technical University of Dresden. And I'm going to present on behalf of Dr. Yurik Hoshu. And my topic today will be on the synergetic action between string hardening thymidase composite and carbon taxidermy phosphate and the tensile loading. So, as we've already known that the reinforced concrete is commonly used in the wood weld infrastructures nowadays. However, its pronounced brittleness and low tensile strength often lead to an inadequate performance of RC structures, especially when subjected to dynamic loading, such as caused by earthquakes, impact, or blast. So, this often involves a substantial social and financial risk making the development of effective and feasible disaster mitigation solutions extremely important. To deal with this issue, I would like to introduce the research training group GRK 2250, which aims to improve the structural impact safety. So the training group involves an 11 PhD students working in different topics, including material design, test setup development, numerical modeling, mechanical engineering, photography, life cycle assessment, and so on. And we also have one postdoc direct coach to organize and supervise the whole project to make sure everything is running smoothly. So through the collaboration between different subjects, we're able to cover from the micro level up to macro level. Well, among all of these different topics, I work on project A3, which focuses on the strengthening layer and the impact far size, together with project A5. But the difference is that A5 is more in the structural level, testing large scale specimen and the impact loading, but A3 is more on the material level, and the material's tensile behavior is of my main interest. To that end, the application of thin layers made of fiber reinforced concrete can be a very good option. Due to, their highly, uh, due to their high ductility and energy absorption before failure. So first of all, I would like to start with two types of commonly used fiber reinforced material. And the first one is the continuous textile reinforced concrete. The TRT possesses quite good strength capacity and quite high tensile strength. However, the dis uh, disadvantages can be if limited multiple cracking propagation, early crack localization, and a relatively large crack width. So to improve the GRC behavior, researchers have been done on hybrid fiber and fast concrete, for example, adding short gloss or carbon fibers to the composite. With the help, uh, with the help of crack bridging effect of short fibers, the first crack stress can be improved and the crack width can be reduced. However, as we can see from this diagram, there's still plenty of space for improvement regarding to the ultimate tensile strength or in the multiple cracking propagation. So here we have a question to think, to think about. Is it possible to further improve the hyperimpulse composite behavior? And how about tailoring the material with the fibers or metrics that we already have? For example, the high strength string hardening cement based composite with fiber options of short polymer fibers. So the material itself is already characterized by its superior ductility with high level of multiple cracks, as we can see from this video. And as you see with addition of short P fiber, it is the highest string capacity among the three. What is more, the easy application and good compatibility of STCC with textile also indicate a promising material design of hybrid fiber and false composite which is to combine continuous textile reinforcement with the string hardening cement based composite. So as we can see from this uh, schematic diagram, we expect an increase in the first press stress, uh, an increase in the ultimate tensile strength, and the subsequent high energy absorption. But the most interesting part here is that the multiple cracking span can be largely expanded. So if we have a closer look at the video here, 
we can observe a very typical crack propagation uh, sequence of TRC. We can observe, first of all, the free crack stage followed by the formation of the fine cracks due to the increase in the tensile stress. And in the last stage, no new cracks will appear, but existing cracks will grow and become wider until the ultimate stress is reached. Well, on the, con uh, on the contrary, in case of the combination of SDCC with textile, we can observe a multiple cracking span almost fully covering the intercasting procedure. So for these advantages we've been talking about, how shall we combine these two reinforcement types and how are they going to work together? Since the variable synergetic property is not trivial and it requires a purposeful material design, so we definitely need a proper experimental series to better understand the mechanical interactions in the composite. Basically, we first break the material down into individual components based on the SACC that was already developed by uh, Dr. Yuri Koshu. We move on to the tension test of the textile structure, then to investigate the bond properties on the interfaces and to reach the final target. And uh, which is to properly model the hybrid fiber reinforced composite. So today I'm going to present a part of the experimental research, including the yarn pull-out test, the tension test of textile structure, and of the hybrid reinforced composite. So the same best metrics I'm using here was uh, specially designed for the high strength short fiber reinforced concrete. And for the discontinuous reinforcement, we have six millimeter long P fibers and much steeper PBO fibers. As for the continuous, uh, continuous textile reinforcement, we have the commercial carbon textile and the P textile produced in the ITM Institute in Tsilikistan. And in order to make the results comparable, the P textile was designed with almost the same geometry and the young cross section. Besides, we also took into consideration of the yarns with uh, different impreg uh, impregnation. But today, I will only focus on these three types of material. And P and carbon textile can present very different mechanical behavior. So let's see how these different properties can influence the testing results. So both the pull out test and tension test were performed with the uh, um, Displacement speed of 0.05 millimeter per second, with the entire length of the Campbell displacement is 700 millimeter, with 150 gauge length in the middle. Note that the textile specimens were produced in the same way, but with only bare textile structure in the gauge length. So photos were taken every uh, five seconds with a high resolution camera for the purpose of digital image correlation. So the single yarn pull-out behavior actually revealed the interaction of yarn and surrounding metrics during the tension test of the composite specimen. For example, as we can see here from the figure on the left-hand side, that at the beginning of the tension test, both the metrics and embedded yarns are behaving linearly, which corresponds to this linear branch of the single yarn pull-out load to sleep curve as shown on the right-hand side. As the load increases, cracks, cracks will happen, and we can imagine that the yarns are being pulled out from the debonding area, which can be referred to the non-linear state of the pull-out curve. So in this stage, the pull-out load is uh, actually contributed by the sum of non-debonded portion and the frictional force in the debonded portion. So after the textile rupture, the yarn will be pulled out from the channel, which corresponds to the third stage the dynamic pull-out stage. Then, if we compare the pull-out curves of the uh, single carbon yarn and P yarn, we can observe a stiffer linear branch, higher maximum pull-out force, and smaller maximum slip value in case of carbon yarn. Actually, the shape of the pull-out curve is not only determined by the different shear strength or the bonding efficiencies, but also the elastic modulus of the yarn as well. For example, the P yarn with lower elastic modulus will tend to be stretched more during the pull-out procedure. And now we move on to the larger scale testing. So these two diagrams show us the tensile stretch to string curve of individual SCCC and textile structure only. So the P textile is a bit a little higher tensile strength compared to carbon textile, but with much higher string capacity. 
You know that the string capacity of HCC we can achieve here is only around uh, 1%. Well, compared to jumbo ship specimen, which can, uh, which is made of the same material, but can achieve more than 4%. This actually emphasized on the necessity of the use of continuous reinforcement in larger scale specimen in order to prevent the premature structural failure. And if we compare two types of hyper-reinforced composites, they have noticed that the average crack width in case of carbon textile reinforcement is much lower, showing much safer and better crack control, which corresponds very well to the single yarn product test. When the more ductile P textile undergoes a larger deformation with a subsequent considerable work to fracture energy, however, it should be noticed that this high level of uh, work to fracture energy can be only achieved at a rather large deformation. Well, in the scenario of structure subjected to impact loading, the P textile could not ensure a sufficient confinement of the structural element due to the severe uh, crack localization before the textile failure. Well, an interesting thing that we can observe here of the red curve is that the material didn't immediately fail after the rupture of the textile. It means that the carbon textile ruptures sooner than the failure of the short fiber enforcement. So here we can see the multiple cracking span last from the start of the first crack until the ultimate failure of the entire specimen. Well, here we should pay attention that this tensile uh, relationship is not uh, it's only specific for this type of material combination, and, and it is not deliberately designed. So this effect is hardly relevant for real scale scenarios because failure localization in the strengthening layer would require an extremely severe load input, leading to failure of the strengthening layer, which is not foreseen in this design. So if we compare the hybrid, I'm sorry, it's not working. Okay. And when we compare the hybrid reinforced composites to the SCC material, we can observe the advantages as concluded here. So the mechanical properties improved with increased first crack stress, the tensile strength, and energy absorption. And the structural safety is improved by efficiently preventing the damaged spoliation. And the crack control is improved with largely reduced crack width and increased multiple cracks. Well, this is basically the very end of my presentation today. And of course, it is only a small portion of a more extensive testing series where we can test different textiles and with different testing speeds. For example, a tensile split Hopkins intention bar was used for, for performing the tension test and single yarn product test and the impact loading. And the materials will also be tested and the structural scale cooperating with Project A5 as mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. So that is all for my presentation today. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate it.